Hello, welcome back. It's day two of the uh, Tour de France film. Poor announcers have to add a Vic Swift every time. It gets a little clunky. But um, a day that was going along being very... Um, Uninteresting, you know, a long flat stage, gonna end in a sprint, not much going on, and then crashes started. And after crashes, splits, and then even um, finally the echelons kicked in, the winds got across and into the peloton, and then the stage became anything but boring very quickly. It's always been my experience with women's cycling is that uh, it's rarely boring. In fact, I often find it much more interesting than the men. Now, I am limited with what <clears throat> I can paint from. You know, if they don't give me the image I want, <laughs> I sometimes find myself kind of screaming at the TV, like, no, no, stay with that shot. No, what, why are you leaving? Stop that. But, you know, not, you know, the commentators, the feed comes from uh, French television, and sometimes that buys these shows. But, you know, the, announcers nor I are controlling where the um, where the camera goes <laughs> so if it did I you know in my fantasy world I get to um, watch and be able to pause all the camera fees from all the motorcycles and the helicopters and everything and then that way, <clears throat> excuse me, I will get to uh, find the images I really want. You know, fantasy lives are wonderful, aren't they? But then again, painting the races and having you all watch and you all pay attention to what I'm doing and NBC sharing it all during the tour all of that was a fantasy and all of that has come true. So, you know, dream big. <laughs> or dream small and work hard. There was a, uh, I was watching a documentary, well, my wife was mainly watching it and I was hearing it while I painted yesterday um, on Paul Newman and one of the big things was uh, luck and luck is You know, luck is a thing, and luck, you know, you have lucky circumstances and things, but being ready to capitalize on it, being ready to make it work, and having the goods. So, four years ago now, I just, you know, had been painting the tour and sharing it on Twitter, and that had been kind of, you know, going well. I mean, I'm not. Don't mean to belittle it. And uh, so at the start of the tour, I painted a picture and, you know, put it on Twitter and tagged NBC. NBC Sports at the time still existed and they were covering it. And, you know, didn't think any of it, just put it up. This is what I'm doing. And it was an image of a completed watercolor. <clears throat> and, um, the image of the race in the background and they were sort of had made it a thing to um, show how everybody was watching the tour via their Twitter links and they were sharing them so I thought well that's cool and they put mine up and that was very exciting but what was more exciting was <clears throat> shortly after I got a email from the producer and um, 
She simply said, you know, love what you're doing. Could you send us a time-lapse video? And I was, I wrote back and said, well, of course, I'd be happy to. And then said to myself, I wonder how the hell I do that. <laughs> Clearly, if you look at my stuff, you know I finally figured it out. But the point being, yes, it was very good luck that they reached out. I'm going to call this Queen of the Tour. Um, but again, I had the goods right there. I already had something. And they were very interested. And I said, well, sure, I'd be happy to do that. In fact, I'll send you one of every stage every day. And they're like, okay, but you know, we're not going to put them up. But yeah, sure, go ahead. <clears throat> I moved the chair. The dogs thought it was something, and now they're barking. That's Cleopatra. See? The little girl who thinks, you know, she rules the world. But where was I going? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yes, it was fortunate they saw it, but yet, you know, when it was the goods were there, and then the point being, I was ready to capitalize on it. Not only did I have the product that interested them, but then I was prepared and ready to follow word with action. So yes, fortuitous. So luck, luck is one thing, but what you do with luck, you know, are you able to capitalize on your luck? Do you have the product? Can you back it up? So there, spiel on luck. So I'm working on this piece where I was going when I ta started talking about, you know, not controlling the camera was I kept waiting for another angle of this in the broadcast, you know. They usually have multiple um, camera angles or, you know, they'll do a tight shot. <clears throat> and of course what they did was, this was a little too loose. This is actually, I've focused in tight on the image. They're actually much wider but, you know, I have a fairly large TV screen in front of me. And, you know, I can almost put my nose on it. And that's kind of what I have to do to get the angle I want, to get the image I want. So, yeah, but I'll, I will scream. So now this is um, the team Jumbo Visma with their Mariana Voss. And, of course, the supposition now is... Can this team, who had never won a Tour de France before the men yesterday, um, now they have the yellow jersey in the Tour de France Femme, you know, can they keep it? And given the caliber of Voss's riding, I'm quite sure they could. She is a former world champion. So she certainly has the legs to do it. She's a good climber, as this finish pointed out. But she's also a good sprinter. Because one, she had to sprint when she got to the top of this climb. But, um, so the thing with the screening is I have to re-hit the image. <laughs> The screen goes blank and I go, ah! and then I have to um, just press the image again and it comes back up. So I finally heard, and you know, why nobody said it during the tours broadcast, what the deal is with this jersey. And now I just, I love it all the more. Well, I didn't love it all that much. But the jumbo jersey which has been very tough to figure out how to paint, um, is actually what they did. Of course, it's a Dutch team. So they took an algorithm of all the Rembrandts and Vermeers and figured out the dominant colors 
and the percentage of color of each of the colors that either artist would use and then add those to the jersey in a proportional manner which just intrigued me and now it's like okay this jersey is cool so you know it's a little art history lesson a little history lesson of Dutch culture, which there's certainly a lot of culture. So <clears throat> I'm just that much more impressed with the jersey now. And of course, with just how active the team was in the men's race, and now looking like they're going to be equally active in the women's race. Um, I've kind of learned how to paint it, or at least learned a um, an approach. So I like it now. I had to paint it a lot over the last three weeks, and I'm guessing I'm probably going to have to paint it a lot this time as well. Although with this stage win. Marietta Voss will now be not wearing this jersey anymore, but will sh shift into the um, yellow jersey. She's, of course, because it's a 10 second bonus, but this group came in, and one or two stragglers in the background, but they came in. 29 seconds ahead of the erstwhile yellow jer jersey. And since Marianne Voss was just, I think she lost a second or two to the former yellow jersey at the sprint, and then with time uh, bonuses, lost a little bit more. But she started the day six seconds think it was out of yellow so now her breakaway companions the people who came to the line with her are closest to her on the GC with um, shoot here let me grab the names with Sylvia Pers Persico right behind her here in purple moving up into second with her second place finish. And one of my more favorite riders right here behind in the yellow helmet. Um, I'm going to struggle with the name, but it's Katria Nima Niedoma. She's um, clearly Polish. And I first encountered her in the world championships when they were here in Richmond and I painted the races live on site downtown, which was incredibly fun and stressful. But, is you know, painting like this, I mean, it's a little bit of a challenge to talk to y'all while I do it, but having 150 people piled around me watching me paint, wanting to buy the images as I paint them, was pretty intense. Of course, that many only happened on the last day when the men were having the road race, although it certainly built up to it, the women was pretty intense as well. And of course, that's where I first painted Nia, Nia Doma. And she streaked down a road, swung onto Main Street off of 25th is what the painting was. And actually, if you go, if you look on the website, craigleach.com, and look at the books, there's one called Art of Cycling, um, Richmond 2015, UCI World, Road World Championships. I don't know exactly what the title is, I don't have it in front of me. But you can purchase that book in there you will find the one of Neodoma in the book. 
So I I think actually Marianne Voss was in that race as well, although I don't remember. She wasn't quite some standout. And it was Lizzie Diadem, who I think now has just retired, who won the women's championship. And it was Peter Sagan starting his three-year run of consecutive world championship titles. Of course, when that happened, everybody's like, no one's ever done it before. No one's ever won three in a row. And what they meant was no man has ever done it before because Mariana Voss has done four in a row. Although, as you can see, she's not in the rainbow now, so she hasn't done it recently. And the slight caveat was there was one year it didn't happen. I cannot remember why for the life of me right now. But so just laying in the background, remind you, you can see all of the cycling art from both the men and, you know, the stage two now. So of all the paintings thus far, the women, the Tour de France Femme, at theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And like I mentioned, there is the uh, website where you can see more of my art and my two books that I've published to date. And that's gregleach.com. And uh, there's the painting today. Please leave a comment. Curious what you think. Curious what you think of women's cycling. I mean, we don't have to restrict it to just what I'm painting. And um, give it a thumbs up. And, you know, if you know of any friends who don't know about it and you like what you see, please share it with them. All of that helps me get more attention to it. And then if there's enough attention, it will actually start to be a revenue stream as well. So... Thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. The Queen of the Tour, ladies and gentlemen.